Hello, my name is Brandon Faulkner. I'm an intern for Village Core. Our website is villagecore.org. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for this and other recorded events such as Tech Topics and Hidden Tales and much more. Today I'm joined by uh, Todd Brinkman and today we'll be discussing the topic of virtual reality and creating a memory. You see Todd here does many things with virtual reality and one of his uh, one of his things that he does is virtual reality for prayers, um, which is a very interesting topic and how um, the growing world nowadays needs more things like this to show the good uh, and what's out there. So thank you so very much for being uh, here with me, Todd. Thank you. It's um, great to be here. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanted to talk to you today about kind of... Um, kind of what people experience with virtual reality and how if we can create a past memory for them, how will that affect them? Will that make them feel a little bit nostalgic and sad or will that make them feel nostalgic and happy about what they just experienced? Yes, thank you. And again, it's great to be here. I love your mission and, and what you're doing uh, with, with your organization. And yeah, really excited to talk to you, really how we can use our new tools in a way that really helps seniors and others feel loved, connected, and empowered. And virtual reality is in its early phases, but now we're getting to get we're beginning to get some research that can really start the conversation of how to use VR to, oh uh, yeah, like you said, you know, make people feel happy and connected. And in a world of isolation and depression, we have access to new tools to rethink things like Christmas memories uh, and how we can use really space and time to really leverage these experiences to help seniors. Uh, as we know, we're all entering this period of the loneliness crisis uh, for our seniors and 30% of our seniors now live alone. I think the number was like 28%, something like that. And, and how we got here is how we got here, but we do have new tools to help us feel connected. And some of that would include memory. So I'm excited to have this, this little chat with you today. Yes. And do you, for with virtual reality for prayers, do you think that it's important for people to experience kind of their safe space to make them say, say they are in a hospital and they receive bad news? Do you think that it's important for them to be in a safe space that's loving and kind and that they can go to a happy place when they experience these kind of things? Yes. And that's a great, that's a great question. So just imagine you know, for a second, you know, it's COVID. There's no one in the room. Everybody treats you like you have a disease. <laughs> you know, it's very tough. You're all alone. This is the worst day of your life. You have COVID. And the walls are white. And it's very sterile. And, you know, what a terrible place to be. You're all alone. Uh, for some of us, it's faith. You know, where's God in all of this? And it doesn't have to be uh, for our conversation today. But we can actually bring people on a trip now. So what a great story that would have been if we could have helped hospital patients put a headset on where they could have went somewhere during a really dark time, a tough time, where we question faith, you know, uh, and uh, just this, this feeling of loneliness. So it wouldn't have been great to actually have access to these VR trips where someone could have went to a garden or a park or a place of worship or maybe even visited maybe a loved one's home, for example, or even jump up into a movie theater in space where you can watch a movie with your grandkids in a virtual reality theater. So we have access to all of these new tools and it's inter interesting how we need something like COVID for us to start using these new tools. So we have access to uh, what we would call um, really just a, like a, a, just a presence where we feel like we're somewhere else. So our body is maybe at a you know, senior living business, a senior living home or a hospital, but we feel like we're somewhere else. So it's an exciting opportunity for, for humanity really to unleash our connection with these new tools. And it's, it's just an honor to have done this work over the last seven years. But now people are really looking at other tools now of how we can feel connected. So yes, we have that opportunity now. And today we'll talk about you know, how we can do that. Yeah, very interesting. And do you think with you know, your line of work of going into virtual reality, um, do you think that you can kind of pull uh, away from people being lonely, especially with 
seniors who are in, say, a senior uh, housing facility and they can't go visit the grandchild or their kids, um, do you think that a thing like virtual reality can bring them to that space of them actually being right there with um, with their family and experiencing that? Yes, that's, yeah, what a great question. So a, a good way to answer that would be like a little bit of a story. So imagine you're an isolated senior and you live a couple states away from maybe your grandchild. And uh, your daughter, uh, as an example, has has a daughter and it's Christmas season and you can't be together. And especially during COVID, humanity knows what that feels like when I can't be together with someone. And I would never advocate replacing connection in the real world. But now we have a new, to, new tool to feel connected when we don't have access to being you know, in the same physical space together. So all you have to do is grab a 360 camera. Uh, if you're the daughter in this story, you grab a 360 camera, put it onto a tripod, and you raise the, the tripod to eye level of where maybe the, you would be sitting maybe in the Christmas environment, like a Christmas tree. And then you actually just go ahead and open up the grandmother's Christmas presents, you know, with the daughter and maybe the, the, the young granddaughter is opening up this Christmas present. And it's real. You can see the emotions and it's like, thanks, grandmother, uh, for this present. I'm, I'm going to use it. I love it. And mm -hmm. then they upload it to their family YouTube channel, which can be private. Uh, it's like an unlisted YouTube video uh, or it can be public so other people can enjoy it. Uh, and there's different ways to do that. And the last step is really exciting for that senior living caregiver, this person who puts their whole life into serving seniors. Now they have access to a new tool where they can put a headset on the senior where they can take this like trip, this virtual reality trip to their granddaughter's home where she's opening up these Christmas presents. And just what an opportunity for her to watch this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times where mm -hmm. we can, she can really feel connected. So it's much different than a, a letter, like a handwritten letter. And there's, of course, nothing wrong with it. It's great. Uh, but it's just a new experience. It's much better than a phone call uh, or even a, a Zoom or like we're doing our different types of tools because uh, you actually feel like you're there. Because and we're in this example, I'm over here and you're in that box over there mm -hmm. on Zoom. We're not in the same space together. Yeah. And we can feel that. Yeah. And psychologists call it body illusion in theory or a sense of presence. So our physical body is here in an environment that may be bad uh, or lonely, but we can feel like we're somewhere else where we're connected to the family or uh, you know, faithful places like a church or a synagogue, for example. Or it could just be a time to relax and be at peace at a garden. So with the work that I've been able to do, you know, just imagine like a, an inmate, someone who's in a juvenile center who made a mistake, right? And we're reevaluating now our juvenile system. And what, what if they could go to a park or do like telehealth with a pastor or a religious leader and where they can feel like they're together. And the ones we're talking about now is a 360 video, which is like the early stages of VR, it's very primitive and it's easy and affordable, but you can also jump forward into things like a virtual reality environment uh, and, spa and space, for example. And our local chamber here, the East County Chamber in San Diego, we're going to create a virtual reality world. And part of that is going to be a movie theater where seniors can actually wow. go into a virtual reality movie theater, sit down, and they, they're going to feel that like, okay, I'm, at a movie, I'm in a movie theater. And then her two grandkids will come in and sit next to her as their avatars, and they can connect and watch a movie together. And again, it doesn't replace the wor the real world, but we have new tools to really help us feel connected. And what a blessing to seniors who sometimes can't physically travel around the world and be, be with everybody. Uh, it's just a new tool to be together. And, uh, and all of this continues uh, into augmented reality, which is a little bit different. But mixed reality has a lot of implications for being connected as well. And this is where you're uh, in the real world. You put on these special weird looking glasses and somebody comes in next to you as kind of like a ghost. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can collaborate together and be together. So it's much different than a VR world because you're in the real world. But, but people are going to be around you uh, in the mixed reality. So we have all these new tools and perfect timing as we just come out of COVID. And we have all these new tools to be connected. And it's up to all of us to use it for good. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people will use it for, for bad. And we can figure out what that is together.
Yeah. But it's important for us to start VR in a way that's good and we can help people feel connected. Yeah, very interesting. And how do you think your uh, your background in advertising and marketing um, influences your approach in kind of spreading awareness about virtual reality um, for your uh, ministry project and related works? Yes, yes, great question. So virtual reality is an immersive environment so we can bring people really anywhere. And to answer your question about marketing is it's really important for us to, to do something new. And being in the marketing for you know, 20 years now, I remember in college where they taught us you know, the marketing mix, the four P's of marketing and all of this, right? We did the same thing for 30 years over and over and over again. And we haven't had too many original ideas of marketing you know, in a long time until now. Mm-hmm. So we have a new marketing mix where we can now use virtual reality AI, generative AI, and, and uh, different types of robotics. And we have all the reality tools that we just talked about. So we're basically reimagining or rethinking our marketing mix, really in the early phases of this. So it's fun for me now to take our chamber presidents and our local mayors and city council people uh, as kind of like a hologram. Right now it's a 3D video, but we're going to put them into local gas stations. Uh, so, for example, you come into East County, you pull up to a gas tank, there'll be a QR code and, you know, scan this to hear a message from our community yeah. leaders. And then, bam, there's a 3D video in like early stages of a hologram of yeah. a local chamber president saying, welcome to our community. Don't just drive through. We have a lot of local restaurants and right across the street over there is a local restaurant, you know, go over there. So it's hyper local. It's relevant. You know, it's very timely. And for me, it's still a little bit of like the ministry work. It just uh, take out the word ministry and call it advertising. Mm-hmm. But we have new tools to really help us feel connected to local because one of the great benefits of the latter parts of the third industrial age is the fact that we got the internet, right? Now we yeah. can really launch a business without a physical building. And that allowed us to do that or to scale in these new online uh, operations. Uh, new revenue streams but now we're going to extend that even further into these new reality tools so now we get to rethink things so to sum it up uh in a nutshell is we've been doing the same things in marketing you know for decades right nothing new until now where we have new tools so we get to really rethink local and for me it's about ministry work helping people feel connected but it's also about supporting our small businesses and our community leaders because they're going to be left behind uh, in our new fourth industrial age, right? All these yeah. new technologies. I think we should do the opposite of what makes sense sometimes. I'm more of the contrarian. So as the world goes really big, I'm going super small. So we can help small businesses really grow and and, and just really feel you know, empowered. And, and one other note is we're creating a virtual reality world in East County where we're gonna rethink local politics. We're gonna do an experiment this next election cycle where people can come into a VR world and safely look at actually uh, different topics, different local il- issues without the filter of traditional news, you know, where it's, it's a very little about the meat of the topic. And it's a lot of narrative. It's a lot of this is how you should think about it. So you get to go in and, and actually, you know, meet the 3D image uh, or like an early stage hologram of a local candidate. You get to hear from them in a format now that we have access to and we're going to going to do all these crazy things so we get to rethink things and it's really your generation brandon so that's why i appreciate you doing the interview is it's really going to be up to your generation of how we get to rethink things we get to let a lot of things go and we get to start a whole lot of new things so it's an exciting time if you if you're waiting for the world to change uh this is uh this is a good time for you (laughs) yeah and do you think that with like this virtual reality and stuff you mentioned that um starting this election cycle, people will actually get to experience um, the issues that are going on in, the, in their community. Do you think that this will enact more change from people who normally don't vote in these election cycles because they think um, their local politicians are lying to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word lying is an interesting word. And mm-hmm. we have a media that's really segmented. And it has been for decades now with cable TV and all these news channels that just you know, fit the narrative of a specific niche. And now that's been exacerbated by uh, social media. Like if you've ever watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix, and if you haven't, you should watch it. 
It's the way these AI algorithms that just give us what we want to see. And we think that's the world. So now that comes into journalism now where we're really angry. We're really divided as a country. So it's important for us that get access to this new technology in the beginning is to bring us together, you know, where we can feel connected to each other, hear other viewpoints that's unfiltered. And we get to really use our new technology to rethink local by introducing new ideas, new thoughts. And change always comes with new ideas and innovation. So you'll have a lot of people not against innovation and new ideas, but they'll see things as threats. And so it's an interesting time of, of how people will say, well, no, I want to hear from the, somebody who thinks differently than me. I want to hear from them. And I think a lot of people are that way now where we get to just reimagine what is local because we get so obsessed nationally and globally. And mm -hmm. some of that's okay, right? Uh, but we don't know enough about our own local buildings, our own local businesses, our local cities. And then out of this, I think what will emerge is a better class of local leader. Because right now it's right, really the loud and the divided win. You know, it's not my fault, it's their fault. You know, we don't actually fix things anymore, right? Uh, so we need people who actually can use our new tech technology to fix things. And uh, so that's what I'm, I'm just super excited about going forward. So yes, it's all about returning back to community, back to local. That's my day. And do you think that with uh, the use of virtual realities, especially in senior living or in hospitals, um, do you think that it's important to bring these people to um, the past or the future? Do you think that is a possibility? Yes. Yeah, isn't that interesting? As we come out of COVID, we have access to an immersive reality where people can go somewhere, right? Yeah. And it's interesting. So in, in my work, uh, there's six steps in creating a VR experience. And the fourth one is the VR environment. So in a sense, it's like, okay, I've created all this stuff. Now, where am I going to bring someone? And with that, we get to leverage time for the first time. Not time travel yet. <laughs> it's just we get to bring somebody uh, into three places, the past, uh, into the present, and the future. So when somebody puts on the headset, they'll instantly look around and go, hey, this is the town I grew up in. And we can experience it. Maybe somebody had trauma in their past. You know, somebody can experience this and then talk to a counselor like this is where the incident happened. In a safe space, they can forgive or start to let go. And that's really been my work is, you know, in early trauma. I spent six months studying PTSD and trauma and how we can use VR to help us go back and, and deal with things. And it's one thing to say, okay, close your eyes, imagine this is the incident. So it's another thing entirely different when you go, oh, wow, I'm actually there. <laughs> yeah. uh, or another great example would be learning as we rethink education over the next few years is now we can go back actually to the field at Gettysburg where the, where the fight happened. And like, do, do you see over there that little hill and it goes down and then to the right, that's where the troops charged. And you can't say that in a PDF or a book. You yeah. have to feel it go, I totally got it. I get it. And so we can experience learning instead of uh, we were, we're just remembering facts for a test. So it'll start to change the way that we uh, learn more, especially with the personalized approach to learning. Uh, so we can leverage time going backwards. We can bring people to today, like to a park, right? Pretty simple. Or we can bring people to the future where they can imagine a future where they uh, have hit a, hit a mark. So maybe you're a, a city manager or a mayor, you can project an image of the future. And the technology is so good now where we can have a 360 video and we can actually say, here is a plot of land. It's just dirt. Phase one is now there's a, there's a, a driveway up to a small building. Phase two, now there's 10 buildings. So you can, instead of saying, imagine uh, us an environment where there's all these buildings. Another thing entirely when people go, hey, I totally get your vision totally yep. get it i can see that so in phase three it looks like there may be some problems with blah 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 blah, blah. Yeah. and you can do that now so we can actually leverage time uh for the first time in advertising and even personal development like um and thinking grow rich they talk about you have to you know think about it but the key part is you have to believe it and if you can actually see yourself uh getting out of that wheelchair and walking again but what if you can actually have a personalized experience where you actually 
completed that 5K and everybody's congratulating you. You get to rewire your mind. And I had an amazing conversation with the Catholic Church a while back. They signed somebody to the project uh, a few years ago. And we actually came to the same conclusion that this might be so powerful that, you know, what if that's not God's will for your life? And again, it's not here to talk about religion, but it's so powerful that if I know that I'm going to Yale because I, my dad created an experience for me where I saw my first day as a freshman, like it's ingrained in my head as I saw my first day at college. And you may be 12 years old, yeah. but what if you're not supposed to go to Yale? <laughs> you're supposed to yeah. go to Harvard, SDSU, for example. So yeah. that the, the neural conditioning, the neuroplasticity is so powerful. It begins to, to program people. And that's where some of the generative AI and as it gets into VR, you know, uh, you know, it's it's a little scary, <laughs> but it can be used for really a lot of good, especially with seniors who maybe don't feel empowered. You know, they can feel like they're, you know, part of things because they can see things into the future. So it's really important for us to use those three things again. Uh, we can leverage um, VR to go back in time uh, to feel connected to memories. We can go to the present or leverage time to go forward. But yeah, it is interesting, especially when you talk about the past. Is mm -hmm. is it's really powerful, and when you look at like early care dementia, uh, like uh, memory challenges, is the information is becoming quickly validated that we can actually help seniors connect to their past. Oh wow! Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the research that's coming. Uh, is is like if we can feel connected to a memory of our past and add additional uh, immersive qualities like sound, maybe uh, vanilla, like that's Christmas to me is vanilla and this particular song. So if you can put a senior and they put a headset on and they go back to the living room of the house where they're from or their hometown in another country, and then they put the headphones on, it sounds like a busy street where they grew up, and then they put a headset on and they feel like they're there. It does amazing things to to the mind, you know, it, and uh, the research is being done, obviously, now and uh, like sound. Uh, I may not have a memory or my my I'm being challenged in a certain way with the mind. Right. But we mm -hmm. hear that certain song and it it just triggers. Something. And all of a sudden they're peaceful. Yeah. They're less agitated. So what is that? And so we're going to keep looking at that of how we can leverage the time, uh, leverage time by going back. To really feel connected to our memory. So what I like to think of it uh, as is like a, a photograph, right? Mm -hmm. You basically look at an old Christmas photo, those old Polaroid. That's what we have. Those old really bad po photos from 30 years ago. You look at it and you know you get a sense of like yourself and your memories in your past because I think our brain stores probably everything, right? Mm -hmm. So we have access to these memories. And when we look at this picture, but what if you were a chamber of commerce president. And when you did a ribbon cutting, you took a 360 camera, put it at an eye level where it matched everybody in the room uh, and you gave that to the historical society. So five years from now, people get to put the headset on and they get to feel connected to a past experience. So you can do the same thing with Christmas, Thanksgiving or birthday. Wouldn't it be interesting, and if this isn't even AI stuff yet, but if you recorded your let's just say your son's birthday party and he's six years old uh, and you recorded that with a th 360 camera, right? You take a 360 camera, spin it on a tripod, put it at eye level where everybody is. Because if you don't do it that way, it looks really funny. You yeah. know, it's got to, it has to feel like you're there. Uh, but just imagine that experience, you know, 15 years from now, 30 years from now where that child may be experiencing trauma, maybe divorce or death or a job loss or something where, you know, in this example, his life got messed up, right? His life isn't perfect. Things happen. Mm -hmm. And we assemble trauma as, I know I'm bad or I'm wrong or I'm not good enough. But what if we can go back to moments in time where we really felt loved? Like, wow, this was a great memory in my life. I can always go back to that uh, because I can feel a sense of connection. So imagine this uh, six-year-old child's birthday party and take this son you know, throughout his life uh, and, and he gets to remember those experiences. And here's the kicker with the time we have left. Just imagine the six-year-old child is now 80 years old, early memory challenges. We get to bring this 80-year-old back to the six-year-old child's experience. 
and we don't really know uh, what memory looks like, really. I think we're all like beginners in this. Yeah. I think a big part of our next, next industrial revolution isn't necessarily better ways to do advertising or even connection. It just our, our, We're going to learn that our mind is very powerful to help us heal, to help us really feel connected. And I think that's a lot of what the 5G or the Industry 4.0, whatever you want to call it, is the fact that we're really connected with our memories more than we ever knew. And now we're going to look at validating that as we move forward. But it's important to really yeah, use our, our technology for good. And we're going to start to do that. So thanks, Brandon. Yes. And we have just enough time for questioning, questioning here. So if anybody, uh, anybody here has any questions, feel free to unmute and ask them. Hi, Todd. Uh, thank Hello. you again for taking uh, your time. And uh, there were such unique um, thoughts and concepts um, uh, of, of use cases that came to my mind as, as you were talking. One of the things I went through with my mom who had um, some level of dementia um, before she passed. And one day she was hyper... Um, set on going home. Uh, we had, um, I had immigrated my parents from Pakistan to here and uh, to United States. Um, and she wanted to just go home that day. And um, it, it was a challenging day for us. And I was thinking if, we, if I just had that, we are, um, uh, uh, we are memory for her, for her home. I could have put that on her, let her experience her home, and then she would have been satisfied. Um, so I, I, I think that would have been a really good use case uh, yeah. for, for me personally. And then I was thinking about the, um, the movie, uh, Fifty First Dates. I don't know, have you watched that movie? Uh, it's been a while, yes. Yeah, yes. funny movie. Funny movie. <laughs> Don't you think that uh, if if uh, if Adam Sandler uh, had a VR that he could put on his, uh, <laughs> yes. it might have helped every morning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Would that be interesting? <laughs> <laughs> Are we, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's. I never thought of that. That was a great movie. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So I was really interested in what you said about therapy. And has anybody, I think you mentioned there had actually been some research done on this. Is it, can you tell me a little more about that and how it went? Um, yes, I, I've actually written, what, 200 blogs or so. So I, after our meeting here, I'll send Brandon uh, some of our blogs so people maybe kind of access to them. So there's a lot of research, but... Um, Yes, in terms of therapy, I don't have any off the top of my head, but I know telehealth is becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I have a, a family member who's who's a therapist, and I, um, I, and I know they would be interested in this. Yes, so uh, I'll see if I can find some research for you. On the top of my head, uh, um, I can't think of any specific uh, research projects where, um, other than outside of the military, is, is where people can actually you know, go back in time and they can work on it. But I know that uh, part of my work is setting it all up to teach people how to do that. So a therapist can now create environments that are safe. So they can go out into the world. Let's say this is where the fight happened with a divorce couple. This is the fight incident at the bar. And they can actually now put a headset on, the, let's just say the wife, for example. This is where the fight happened. You can put the headset on and look around and go, yep, that's the spot. And you can watch the video where you can pause it and go forward, you can go backwards, and then you can take the headset off and then the, you can talk about it. And this is what we're, we want to set up these test pilots to research this. Right now, it's a little bit hypothetical because for me, uh, I really enjoyed some of the early conversations of, of how they're using this for, uh, for the military. It has to be done professionally. People shouldn't just go out and do this for love <laughs> because it could cause more harm. So a lot of the stuff I kept out of my books just because it's like, we, this has to be done right in a safe and loving environment. But now we have uh, really what I would call like my third type of VR experience. So now we have this 360 video where you put a headset on and you go, yep, I'm at the spot. 
Now you can actually enter that environment as an avatar. And it's pretty primitive right now, but it's getting better. But that, then a counselor can actually come into this, say, 360 video, and they can talk about it. So here is the actual spot of the incident, whatever that happened, whatever happened, right? It could, doesn't have to be bad. It could be good, too. Uh, but this is where uh, the per certain part of unforgiveness maybe just got locked in and you, you got to let it go. Uh, you can create a 360 video of that exact spot. And again, you can come in as an avatar and then the counselor can come in to that space as well and they can have a conversation about it. So we have that available. And specifically, uh, I haven't found any research on that yet. On that yet. Uh, but there are research around, um, like with the military, with trauma, a lot of research around that where people go back actually to a full VR simulation where they actually feel in, ingrained in a situation where they actually feel like they're in war. And it has to be done again in a safe way, but it's actually where you see, uh, and let me backtrack, you put a headset on uh, and then it feels like you're going through a tunnel, like with a train, right? There's a little bright light and you're moving towards it along the way you're walking on a treadmill so you're activating the mind and the body together and then you come out at the other end where it's all light right like you're going through a tunnel and then bam you're in, right in the war you know you hear the loud sounds you hear the gunfire artillery and then that's where you can actually now okay i have a lot of anxiety <laughs> this brings stuff up and then counselors can help uh, with all of that and this uh, technology is so sophisticated now you can actually turn up the intensity. So maybe it's be, uh, small in the beginning, like this is kind of gentle. And you can turn it up where there's a lot of war going around, a lot of things flying around. And it's an experience now where you can actually deal with it. With a professional counselor, you can actually deal with the trauma. Because at night, maybe that individual wakes up with, you know, you know, the fever and they're just sweating and screaming. And their spouse is like, you know, you got to get some help. <laughs> because it's, it's hurting you and it's hurting our family so now we have new tools where they can go back and actually start letting it go and all of that and there is a lot of research in, in that so there's a lot of ways to use vr in a way that we can go back and deal with stuff or even go forward uh and i always love the story of like on somebody who's unsheltered we can bring them forward into their first day of moving into a new apartment you know, their family and friends or counselors or people at their local place of worship are all congratulating them on their first day of moving into an apartment. And right now, that's the furthest thing from their mind. But over time, with the conditioning, they can begin to believe in themselves that this actually happened in the future. So again, there's a lot of ethics around this <laughs> because I believe the mind can actually believe in anything. I think we're very limited in our, in our self-beliefs. I think one human being is you know, it's so much possibility in terms of creation, but we're blocking ourselves because of our past and trauma. So I'm excited to work with any counselors that want to start projects, you know, a safe way to really start validating this as a way to really, yeah, let go of, of stuff. And uh, for me, it's interesting as I share my story of trauma, how, how many people do have trauma in their life. And we uh, band-aid it with, you know, alcohol or drugs or isolation. And especially for seniors, if they can deal with some like uh, like shame or uh, trauma, you know, then they can become happier and at peace. And we just can't stick our incarcerate it into a 10 by 10 room for five years because it is something bad and then bring them back to society. And somehow they're supposed to be OK with that. Uh, now we can actually use, you know, all these tools to really help, you know, the incarcerated maybe do with maybe some of their trauma. And so we have this opportunity now with our new industrial era to use these new tools to really to really help people. So, yes, that's a great question. And I'd love that topic, by the way, Thank if you. you can't tell. <laughs> all right. Well, that is all the time we have. So thank you so much, Todd, for participating in this event. Uh, once again, my name is Brandon Faulkner, and I'm an intern with Village Core. Our website is villagecore.org. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, for this and other recorded events such as Tech Topics and Hidden Tales and much more. Uh, thank you so much for being with uh, here with me today, Todd. Thank you very much, Brandon. It's a pleasure.